King Saul's life spared. King Saul was the first of Israel's kings. He was tall, head and shoulders above his brethren, and from the human standpoint was rather ideal. He had considerable wisdom, too. Indeed, that was his failure. He overlooked the fact that his kingdom differed from all other kingdoms, and he attempted to rule after the manner of other kings. In the case of Israel, God declared himself king, and the person upon the throne was really his representative and should be guided by him in everything. Because David at heart was anxious to do all these things and very repentant whenever he learned that he was wrong, he was spoken of as a man after God's own heart. His heart was right. The anointing of David was kept a secret, but Saul nevertheless began to see that God's favor was with David and that the people of Israel loved him, especially after he delivered them from Goliath and won a number of battles. King Saul selfishly desired that his own family should be perpetuated upon the throne, and hence he was bent upon destroying David. He made him an outlaw, and on every occasion sought to kill him, and thus thwart God's purpose. David, on the contrary, on two occasions had King Saul's life at his disposal, yet did not take it. In this, he was a man after God's own heart. God had caused him to be anointed and would give him the throne. Until God's time should come, David would wait. In sparing King Saul's life, David acted in harmony with the Lord's will. Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. King Saul was God's anointed, and it was for God to depose him and to give the throne to David in his own time. And he did. How valuable it would be to all of us to learn this lesson of patience and waiting upon the Lord, for him to direct in his own time and in his own way. This was the spirit of Jesus. Not my will as a man, but thine, Father divine, be done.